reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had described, decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, 
that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has, has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Touch me, see, because the ghost 
does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Can you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. With everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. To all the nations beginning from Jerusalem, there were witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are, beginning of the third week of the Easter season. So we're continuing to rejoice and celebrate in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this past Monday, uh, you may or may not have been aware, but there was an eclipse across the country. And here, in Eupala, the effects of the eclipse was not very profound and stuff. I mean, if you uh, you know notice, it might have gotten a little bit darker, but it wasn't anything big like it is where it was in the main path of that eclipse where, uh, you know, it went completely like night. The sun got completely blocked and everything. But after the eclipse and stuff, I heard on the radio and on uh, you know, the internet and things like that, a number of people expressing their experience of being in that path of total darkness. And over and over again, I heard a number of people say that they found the experience of being in that, witnessing that eclipse to be very humble. They said, you know, as they saw that moon, you know, block the sun, there was just this awareness of, you know, how big and how grand our universe is and essentially how small they are, you know? And I can understand that, you know? I mean, I've heard that, you know, astronauts, when they go up into space and they can see the planet Earth, uh, you know, they get a similar kind of experience. There's this sense of, wow, you know, uh, you know, we're so small in comparison to the cosmos and stuff. And even if you don't go on the grand scale of space, uh, sometimes if you do so, go to some place like the Grand Canyon and you look at how big this canyon is, and it gives you that sense of, wow, the world that we live in is absolutely amazing, and I feel like just a small speck. In fact, I can even remember when I was a little kid, our family went up, went to uh, Chicago, and we went up to the Sears Tower to the top of it, and at that time, it was the largest building in the world. And as a little kid, I can remember looking down through the window, down in the streets, and, you know, it's high enough up in the Sears Tower that when you're looking down at the streets, the cars, I mean, they just kind of look like ants, you know. Uh, and, you know, you get that sense that, like, wow, you know, uh, you, know we, we, you know, as human beings, we're pretty small in comparison to everything else. And so I can understand that those people who experienced that eclipse had that sense of humility, that sense of humbling, wow, the cosmos is so big and we're so small. Because in truth, we are. I mean, think about it. You know, when we think about it, just the solar system, let alone the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy we're in, or the entirety of the universe, it is so huge. And in reality, we are just little bitty specks in the grand scheme of that whole universe. And so when we think about that, yes, you know, we can think about our 
place in the universe and kind of get humble. You're like, wow, you know, you know, does things happening in other galaxies even care that I exist? You know, they're not probably even aware of it. You know, if there's anything conscious out there, who knows? And so I started thinking about that because, like I said, the eclipse was on Monday and I heard these reports later on Monday and also on Tuesday, there were still reports about this humbling experience that people were going through. And I was thinking about it and I was like, yeah, you know, our human existence can be very humble if we think about it. I mean, we only get, you know, a certain number of years on this planet. You know, our time span is small compared to the millions of years that the Earth has been here and will be here after us, you know. Uh, and, you know, like I said, as far as scale goes, I mean, you know, uh, the average of us is somewhere around six feet, you know, some are smaller, some are taller, but generally speaking, you know, we're, you know, not that big. And I started thinking about that and I thought, you know, that's very true for the world that we live in, the universe that we're a part of. But then what would that mean if I really think about it in comparison to God? Because God created all of this. God created the entire universe. All the millions of different galaxies, all the different planets, all the suns, the black holes, the quasars, the pulsars, all those things that populate our universe. God created all of it. Created this world to breathe life into it. So all the animals, all the birds, all the bugs, and oh yes, all those things. God created all of that. So I'm humbled by the reality of the universe. How much more humbling is it to acknowledge the existence of God? To realize that there is something even bigger, greater, grander, more powerful than the entirety of the universe. And so, as we contemplate the grandeur of God, we need to also think about something else. Because right now, we might feel very small, very tiny. But do we realize that we are created in the image and likeness of God. That yes, we are creatures, we are created by God. But we are also created by God in his image and likeness. And so that's why our faith in Jesus Christ is so important. Jesus Christ is the incarnation of God. God united himself to humanity. And so Jesus Christ is both fully human and fully divine. And so when Jesus Christ suffered and died on that cross, He was united with all of humanity. He made that sacrifice for us. God, this all powerful thing, created everything, suffered and died for each and every one of us. 
And so when we hear the resurrection account in today's gospel, it's made very clear that it is Jesus Christ. It says at first they were frightened because they thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus says, no, not a ghost. Look, the wounds in my hands, the wounds in my feet, come touch me. I am flesh and bone. Jesus' resurrection shows us that God did not leave his humanity behind in the tomb. When he united himself to humanity, it was forever. And so when we look the resurrected Jesus. We see God's plan for us. And so when we realize that this God who created everything. And like I said, when we think about the size of the universe, we realize the power and the glory that God has. And that we are created in his image and likeness. What does that mean? It means that every human life is given the dignity of God. We have an eternal, infinite dignity from God. This is why the church says that every life is sacred. Because every life is made in the image and likeness of God. And so, when we think about that age, we think about the sun, the moon, the cosmos, and we're humble, so small. We think about how powerful God is, and how small we are in comparison. We're humbled by that. And it's understandable, and we should be humble before God, but also realize. That in the eyes of God, we are precious. Every human being is precious in the eyes of God. This is why God will sacrifice himself for us. He will suffer. He will die. Because each and every one of us is precious in his eyes. And so as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we need to realize it's a celebration of human dignity as well. That we need to see each other the way God sees us. We are not small. We are glorious. Each of us reflects the image and likeness of God. Each and every one of us. Saved by our God. Each and every one of us. Loved by our God. And so, we continue to celebrate 
the east proceeds from the west. Just be filled with the joy of the love of God. Let us also fill with the joy of the love of one another. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, the maker of heaven, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, the God not made, but substantial with the power. Through him all things were made, for us men and our salvation, and came down from heaven. Now the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. Amen. For our sake, was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the living and the And this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who sees to the Father and Son, who is the Father and Son of the Lord and the Lord. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess on baptism to give us sins. Look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world of God. Amen. Filled with faith and trust in your goodness to present our petitions to God our Father, <clears throat> for the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, that all the bishops of the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for our president, Congress, judges, and all elected officials, that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit in the conduct of their office. Provide for the good of all. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord our for the members of the military, first responders, doctors, and nurses, and their families, that God will strengthen and protect and bless them in their service. We pray to the Lord. For protection from storms and other natural disasters, and for relief and recovery for the areas affected by natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For the courage to uphold the dignity of the human person, the ending of human trafficking, as well as the abuse of others who are exploited by poverty, bigotry, and by persecution, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For an end to the violence, greed, and hatred. And spirit of peace, compassion, and mercy that will bring peaceful end to the war in Ukraine and Israel, and to stop all violence there is in the nation and around the world. We pray to the Lord. For all priests, that they will faithfully live out their vocation in, to serve God and his holy people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for Thomas Benson and his formation for the priesthood, for all the seminaries of the Archdiocese of Mobile. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our for all our beloved dead, that they receive God's mercy and rejoice in the kingdom of heaven. And for all those who mourn for them, find consolation and peace in the resurrection of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God, you understand every need of the friends of all your faithful. Get a name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today.
Holy Altar, Lord, for the life of the Council Summit, giving thanks to the Lord who is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the foundation of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one on the Holy Church. Remember, Lord, your church spent throughout the world, bring your church to church, together with France, the first time, the church of all the churches. Remember also our brothers and sisters who fall asleep from the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy. For I'm going to be the light of faith, have mercy on us all with grace. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostle. And all the saints who please you throughout the ages. May they bear to be co-heirs to eternal life. We pray to glorify you for your Son, which is the Son. Amen. Amen. Well then, then then, on God Almighty, Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> Takes away the sins of the world, but to the fools of the summer last. Lord, I pray for you. 
Body frame. Body frame. Body frame. Body frame.
Receive the Elijah Cup. This challenge has been used in the celebration of the Holy Mass to remind for all of us who need to pray for vocation, to preach, and religious life and prayer to the end. Place the challenge in your own place and remember to pray for our Christian, to preach, and religious of this archdiocese, and for me, your unworthy servant. Amen. kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mystery may gain in their flesh incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We appreciate it. I do have a few announcements to make. The first one is, is that uh, I will be gone this coming week, Monday through Friday. I'll be back sometime uh, late Friday. Uh, but I'm uh, going to uh, the annual priest gathering after Easter. Uh, so I uh, shall be gone. So there will be no morning mass or rosary uh, during the weekday for this coming week. Um, also, uh, on 
next Saturday at Union Springs. Uh, there will be uh, only the Spanish Mass. It will begin at 3.30. Uh, and uh, there will not be an English Mass at 5 o'clock. Okay, so just give you a heads up on that. Uh, also, uh, um, our secretary forgot to put my announcements in your folder. So. <laughs> uh, the uh, 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 oh, um, we have uh, our Pentecost. We'll be doing when we do uh, our time and talent sign up. That sign up for the different ministries of the church. And so, uh, starting last week, if you didn't notice, uh, in the bulletin, we have highlights of what those different uh, ministries that you can sign up for are. And so, please pay attention to the bulletin. You can get a little brief description so that when we hand out the time and talent sheet, you'll know what each of those things are and what you might want to volunteer for. Okay, so be aware that our time and talent is coming up. Uh, and uh, and the, the descriptions of those different ministries are located there. Um, and mine's kind of blank, so I don't know what else is there in the bulletin. So make, make sure you grab a bulletin. Um, and uh, just one thing, you know, I'm preaching this today, if you didn't notice, on the dignity of a human person. And I know uh, the Vatican has just released the document. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. I'm hoping to read it this week. Uh, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to be very much in line to what I was just talking about today. So if you want to uh, look up the new document, it's, it's, it's um, uh, basically uh, Infinite Dignity is the, the title of it. Uh, like I said, I, have, I myself haven't had a chance to read it. So uh, like I said, this coming week, I hope to go through it for about 20 pages. Uh, so, anyways, uh, but it is on that uh, dignity the human person and why the church teaches what it teaches. So, uh, you know, if you want to know more, uh, there's a new document out just on that. Okay. Um, since I can't remember what else you need to be now. <laughs> Lord, be with you. <laughs>